Good morning everyone. My name is Miss Karina and I work at the Fairbanks Museum and this is Saturday Morning Story Time. Today's book is The Fog um, by Kaya McClear and illustrated by Kennard Pack. Uh, this book is actually available at the Fairbanks Museum gift shop. Let's get started. Far north on a wild sea was an island covered with ice. People came from around the world to visit this special place. Most of the birds living on the island paid little attention to these visitors, but there was one bird, a small yellow warbler, who did pay attention. Welcome to Icy Land. Warble was a devoted human watcher. There was always new humans for him to watch. Nothing else Warble did made him happier. Number 671, beheaded bibliophilic female. Number 672, bald-headed glitzy male. But one spring day, something happened to interrupt his happiness. That day, a warm fog rolled in from the sea. All morning long, it whisked and swirled, climbing hills and spilling into valleys. By lunchtime, the brightness of morning had faded to a silvery blue. By dinner time, the fog had turned everything ghostly. For days, Warble sat high in his tree and waited for a strong gust of wind to come lift the fog. He waited and waited. Being a handy warbler, he tried to chase it away. But no matter what he did, the fog came back. Warble invited his neighbors over to discuss the situation. It's just a little fog. I wouldn't even call it fog. Mist, maybe. Ether, perhaps. Fog, no. The fog has come. Sometimes these things happen. Let us be humble and accept it. I like what it does to my feathers. Only the ducks seem to care. The next morning, a new sign appeared. Welcome to Fogland. The renaming of the island had a curious effect. Many of the birds began to forget that there was ever a time before the fog. But Warble did not forget and he had started to notice other changes too. He went to tell the others what he had seen, but they were too busy. Here's looking at you, kid. How to brighten your home with 1,000 watt nest lights. Even the ducks had moved on and didn't want to talk about it. The fog continued to spread Warble still waited in his tree, hoping to spot a human, but there were no more sightings. So he put away his book and tried his best to ignore the fog, until even he began to wonder if things had ever been any different. But then, one foggy morning, Warble spotted a colorful speck in the distance. Perhaps, peering closely, he saw a dark-haired human ghosting through the meadow. It was a rare female species, and she was singing a song. Number 673, red hooded spectacled female, juvenile. She looked a bit lost. Happy to see a human again, Warble offered her insects to eat, and she liked them. The human in return offered Warble gifts and showed him how to fold intricate paper things. And then they stayed eating insects and folding paper and speaking in every way except with words until Warble made a surprising discovery. Chirp, chirp, I'm listening. Chirp, really? Chirp, chirp, hmm. The human also saw the fog. Warble asked the human if she thought there were others who saw the fog too. She was unsure. How could they find out? That's 
when she had an idea. She opened her backpack and set to work. The human made a paper boat and floated it out to sea. Do you see the fog? They waited for a reply, but none arrived. So they launched more boats, and again, they waited. Finally, they had an answer. It was a note from a walrus in eastern Canada. Yes, I see the fog. Another note from a musk ox in Norway. Yes, and we want to fix it. Another came from some cats in England. Yes, we see it. Are you a bird? Can we eat you? Notes arrived from around the world. With each one, the fog began to lift a little, and the wind began to blow again, until the world grew a little less ghostly, and it became easier to notice things. Big things, and tiny things, shiny red things, and soft feathery things. And slowly, slowly, the beautiful island brightened, and Warble and the humans found time to rest under the stars, which they could now see. The moon drifted in the sky, and they began to sing. They sang to each other and to the moon, and because they were happy to be together, sharing the clear night view. I hope you enjoyed that story. And again, this is also available at the Field Aid Museum gift shop. And I will see you next time. Tune in next Saturday at 10 a.m. for another story with me.